Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video guide for Eve Echoes. This time around, I wanted to talk about the Kaldari Tyra, Tyra, however you want to pronounce it, um, and the various different abilities that you can do with this, various different things that this ship can do, and how amazing it can be for you. Before we jump in, if you are enjoying this content, let me know by liking the video or subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Plenty more Eve Echoes content to come and plenty more Eve Echoes content already on the channel if you haven't found it yet. And do let me know what you're enjoying and what you would like to see in future, either in the comments section down below or by coming and finding me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Patreon or Discord. Yay, things are selling. Um... <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah, this on screen here is the Kaldari Tyra. This is an industrial ship. Um, it is a hauling ship. And the reason I want to talk about this is people saying things like, Hey, Benzi, I've got a ton of ships already in my station. I've decided I want to move to Maspa or wherever else. How do I do that? Now, you can either bring them all one by one by one, or you can use something like the Tyra. Other people say, hey, Benzi, I'm, you know, I watched your video on hauling using the Imacus Mobility. Um, what happens if I want to take this to the next level? How can I make a bit more money doing that? And again, we're going to cover that in this video, but the answer ultimately is Tyra. Now, why this particular ship? Well, if we look at its at its stat page here, you can see two high slots, two mid slots, five low slots, three each of the industrial and power grid rigs, um, follow, uh, but those aren't ultimately the important parts. The important parts here are the roll bonus. First of all, as an industrial hauling ship, it has built-in warp stability, which means you do need at least warp disruptor strength of two innately to pin a Tyra down. And of course, if you add extra fittings in, you can just rack that up higher and higher and higher, making it harder and harder to lock you down. Industrial Ship Command. Every point you have in that skill gives you 20% cargo hold capacity, and Industrial Ship Defense Upgrade gives you plus 10% shield. So you can really make a tank out of this ship. That said, I do, uh, the ultimate reason I have chosen this is very simple. Of all of the industrial ships currently available in the beta, the Tyra has the largest cargo hold at 8,100 meters cubed. You'll notice while we're on this info page here, flight velocity is 115 meters per second, and the warp speed is only three astronomical units with an inertia modifier of 0.72. Needless to say, this ship is slow and heavy. But mainly, it's ultimately the reason I've chosen this one is that cargo hold capacity, it is bigger than the others, and certainly with the five points in cargo hold capacity um, as a skill there using industrial ship command, well, I'll show you. If we go into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the inventory here and have a look at it, you'll see that with five skill points in industrial ship command, we have a hangar here, uh, sorry, a, 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 a cargo bay of 40 thousand five hundred meters cubed that is big enough to quite comfortably fit a magnate a merlin a venture an imacus high mobility a coercer and a cormorant all in there in fact if i wanted to i could start packaging in some of my other ships like the vigil probe worm all of that that you see down the side there too the tyra's cargo hold is huge get that skill in there and suddenly you have a ship that just well it can carry almost anything now, when we have a look at in regards to fitting, ultimately fitting is going to be very straightforward for me. I'm just simply going to say cargo hold optimization rigs, I, if you can get a Mark III one, even better, but three of the Mark Ones does quite nicely. That, uh, that coupled with the ability, the innate roll, bonus of, innate roll bonus of warp stability, means already this ship has plus four warp stability, three for the rigs, one for the roll bonus, so a warp stability of five. That means you need to get warp strength five warp disruptors. That's like two of the Mark II, two of the tier two ones and a couple of other ones here and there as well. Then I have uh, on here a whole load of Mark I warp core stabilizers. Just because these are nice and cheap, you can shove those into these slots. And if you do get pinned down, if someone does come along with five strength warp disruption, you can then pop those on and temporarily take yourself up to um, a, a defense there of ultimately seven, which is insane. This ship is not going to get pinned down. Now that means that yes, as you've seen there, if I go back into the inventory screen, if I want to move ships between uh, different stations, I can go into my ship hangar, I can pick up, for example, if I say actually my stab a fleet issue, let's move that. If I move that to the Tyra, hopefully there should be just enough space left. Oh, there we are, plenty of space. I can pop that into the Tyra. And now look, it's even got a Stabber Fleet issue boxed up inside there to take as well. I can then grab a whole load of all of these different bits and pieces, pop them into that hangar, and move them to whichever station I want. 
So that is ultimately how to move your ships from one station to another without having to do it ship by ship by ship. What I do otherwise before having a Tyro, if I'm just moving one or two bits and pieces, like recently I've gone and picked up a Thrasher Fleet issue, an Interdictor and a Guardian because I want to do a video on all the different types of Thrashers. Um, what I did there is I went out in a uh, just a Slasher because it's a cheap and very fast frigate. I fly that Slasher out to wherever the ship was. I grab the Thrasher and I fly back to Masper, dock it there. I then grab another Slasher and off I go to the next pickup and come back, which means when you look at my personal assets page, you'll see that actually quite a few of these stations do have Slashers already sitting in them, or Rifters sometimes I use as well. It's like Orvergne there, where I've gone out in a Slasher recently to pick up um, one of those one of those thrashers and then I've brought it back leaving the slasher there now I can either sell that I can leave it there as a marker um, or I can destroy it depending if I just want to clear up the menu destroy it you just tap it and then hit destroy and um, if you're not at the station there is a five minute delay for the message to apply but eh, oh well so that is ultimately there how as I said how you would move your different ships you do need to uh, you are going to need to have that industrial um, industrial ship operation that's under cruising technology if we then scroll right the way down to the bottom here industrial ship command the basic skill itself gives you a bit of extra velocity and a bit of extra uh, inertia modifier reduction um, in regards to uh, like moving your Tyra, so it means your Tyra is going to be that little bit more maneuverable out in space. But the main reason to get that is just to whack that cargo hold all the way up. Like literally, if I were to show you the other ships, there is no way you right now in the beta you can get forty thousand five hundred meters cubed so easily. Tyras aren't cheap, but they aren't they aren't the most expensive ships on the market either. I mean, heck, let's have a look at the market right now and see if we can find one for sale. And we can have a look at the other industrial ships there as well, and you'll see why I went for the Tyra. So if we go to ships, sorry, scrolling down too fast, and into industrial ship, you'll see that there it is, the Tyra. Again, just remember that cargo hold capacity of 8,100 with the 20% bonus. Now, the other tier six options are the, uh, the Kyros, uh, Kyros, 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 which has the same skills, same stats on their cargo hold capacity, but only a basic of 3,600 meters cubed. That's pathetic in comparison. What about the Mammoth, the Minmatar version? Need to do the long press. Let's have a look again. It's got the 20% cargo hold capacity, 6,800 meters cubed. Okay, but then surely something like the Nereus, that, that, that must have a decent size. Nope, even that one's... Uh, there, 10 meters cubed, so I'm looking at the high mobility one there. I'm getting myself confused. Um, where is the standard Nereus? There it is. If we have a look at that, even the high one there, 5,400 meters cubed. It's just crazy, utterly crazy how good the Tyra is in comparison to the others. 8,100 meters cubed built in, and you can whack that up with those skills. Now here on the market, you can see currently they're going for about twenty to twenty-eight thousand, um, sort of average. If you're paying more than thirty, sort of twenty-eight thousand. So if you're paying more than thirty million, you're probably overpaying. So for about thirty million, you can get one of these ships um, and then move your stuff around nice and easily. But what about other ways to make money with it? Well, actually, that's kind of the point that I want to make on this video. That using a Tyra, you can make a lot of money very quickly. If we go down to something like, say, mechanical rigs and then things like the industrial rigs, everyone likes miners. Let's have a look at the miner efficiency upgrades. There we are. Here in Maspa, these are selling for about 14 million. In other stations, they're selling for as little as 5 million, which means if I were to jump down to Jita, buy that and bring it all back and then sell it at 14 million, I'm going to make a massive profit. The idea here is to find stuff that is selling ludicrously well on the market. So again, let's have a look at perhaps missile launches, see if any of these are far away. I know a lot of people at the moment are using heavy missiles on Caracals, which is another video I've got incoming there. That's not heavy assault missiles. There we are. So say Kaldari Navy heavy missiles. Let's have a look at how these are selling on the market. So they're 5 million if I go all the way down to BKG Q2. In Jita, they're selling for 7,850,000 um, and all the way up to almost 10 million a piece there. So if I wanted to, I could jump out to BKG Q2, um, grab a load of these, prop, uh, pop them in a Tyra, turn around, come back, and then sell it all at Jita 
for profit or at Masper or whichever station you are. Basically, just go through stuff and find different ships, different parts, etc., that can be ridiculously cheap in certain places and ridiculously expensive in others. I'm trying to think which one it was here. Was it the Breach or Assault I was looking at earlier? Yeah, this one. 28,000 selling for 45 elsewhere. I'd be almost tempted to go and grab that from 20 EEW, grab that, bring it back, and then sell it for the 40 million. Even at 40 million, it's undercutting. Just taking it off the market at less than 30 million, I've made 10 million profit in one haul. And that is a really quick and easy way to make a load of money. Now, of course, when doing that, um, you're going to want, in addition to obviously your industrial uh, command ship, industrial operation uh, skill, you're going to want to have trade skills training. Now, you'll see this. I've nearly got this to level five now. So close. In fact, how close are we? Um, but yeah, that ultimately is there because we want to have more market orders and more contracts, that kind of thing. Accounting is another very useful skill to have because um, you're going to have that broker's fee and sales tax reduced so that you can buy things cheaper and you can sell them for less um, of a tax and make more money doing it. Um, crikey, yeah, that, that skill is so close. One hour, six minutes until I've got trade at level five. Just in time for the beta to end, of course. But there we have it. That is the Tyra. There's not really much I wanted to say on this other than if you're looking to move ships from station to another and all of your different fittings and parts that go with it, a Tyra is a fantastic way of doing it. If you're looking to make a quick bit of money on the side, really AFK, then there is a there aren't many better ways of making AFK money than buying stuff cheaply at one station, running around and picking it all up, bringing it back to a central station like Maspa or Jita or Pata and selling it at a massively increased profit. Buy something for 20,000, sell it at 50,000. 20 million, 50 million, you name it. The profit margins can be huge and it's a great way to make money very, very easily. That said, with a ship this slow, you do want to be careful going into Nullsec. Um, I would try and consider bringing a friend with you just to watch your back in case anything does happen. But that's why on the fittings, I've gone for so many of those uh, those warp uh, cargo hold optimization rigs there just to keep that going. I've also gone for the warp disruptors there, to uh, the warp stabilizers, just to make sure that I don't get pinned down. I can go in there, I can grab things, and I can come back out really, really quickly. Anyway, I do hope you find that helpful. Do hope you find that useful. Um, certainly when the servers come back up online, this can be a great way to make money fairly quickly. And Tyras tend to go fairly cheaply. Um, even when the beta first started, 30 million was about what they cost. Um, a fair amount of people are making them. The blueprints aren't overly difficult to get hold of. And once corporations are up and running, getting these guys and getting sort of the security to move between different sectors should be fairly straightforward. Anyway, that covers everything I wanted to mention about the Tyra. I do hope it's useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.